Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. I really like that one. That one's nice. Welcome back, everyone. Today we are going over this optic right here from the folks at Holosun. This is the Holosun AEMS, and many people, probably myself included, uh, consider this to be the flagship red dot from Holosun. And Holosun is a company that probably I don't know seven or eight years ago people kind of laughed at and nowadays they've kind of taken over uh, the red dot industries in many respects because they've really pushed the limit in terms of innovation uh, for their products and this one has been out now i believe it came out in early 2021 and i actually got mine in late 2021 which will play a role here in what we talk about uh, going through the video uh, but this one has tons of rounds on it if i had to do the math i would say conservatively 3,000 rounds probably more towards 5,000 rounds it's been on several different guns that we've had here on the channel um and it just has been on since 2021 when they sent it in we have not turned it off we have not engaged auto mode which we'll talk about here in a second so battery life is doing pretty darn well but before we get into all the little details of the optic a couple things that we do need to mention here this is going to be a mug club episode so we're going to do the free review here of the optic itself for youtube and rumble then we're going to head over to mug club where we make exclusive content uh, that is censorship free and we're going to be talking about a highly censored topic uh, today we're going to talk about israel and uh, the war that's going on over there and probably in a way that uh, I don't think anybody's talked about publicly before, kind of a different take on it, at least mine anyway. And then uh, we're going to do that after the show. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely sign up here. There's other folks over there, of course, Alex Jones, Nick DiPaolo, uh, Brian Callen, lots of other Hodge twins, lots of other folks. Steven, of course, is over there as well, creating exclusive content and it's censorship free, which certainly is nice. The code on your screen will get you a free month. So there is that. Moving on back to the optic, just sort of some basics on it is that it comes in a number of different varieties. This is the, I guess, full feature version of it and then they also make a core version of it key differences there is going to be a couple different things number one you get these clear flip up lens covers or flip down rather i should say lens covers with the full model here and those are sort of sacrificial lenses and honestly they're very good uh, they lock in place as you guys can see and a lot of people i've read reviews online where people didn't even know those were there and were looking through uh, the whole way all four lenses if you will because uh, obviously they're completely clear as are the lenses on the inside. Um, so it comes in uh, this model, again, which is a full feature model. The biggest other thing besides these caps here is that the full feature model has the uh, donut of death reticle. So it has a multi reticle system. So it has the two MOA dot with a 65 MOA ring. So a lot of folks who are like EOTech fans will be a fan of that for sure. Uh, and then it also has the ability to drop down just to the two MOA dot so you can switch it out based on the side buttons here. Uh, and then you also have the ability to have a 65 MOA ring, which outside of a shotgun application, I'm not really sure why that would be. Um, and then of course the full model here has the solar backup. And so what that does is as long as there is enough light out, then it doesn't actually use battery power to run. It's actually using the solar energy to power the optic. And then as soon as sort of it gets dark or something like that, it automatically switches back to battery power. So um, those are, I guess, the differences between the AEMS and the AEMS core. And before jumping into the individual details on the optic itself, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video. This is one you guys probably uh, will be excited about. It is the folks at Venture Surplus. I don't know if you guys can see that in frame or not during the intro there, but I just picked up these new OCP pants and uh, also the saw cleaning tool, which probably isn't applicable to most of you, but I do have a saw and it's applicable to me. Uh, but what Venture Surplus is, is they're a place that has authentic US military gear uh, and some of it's surplus, some of it's new, which is actually kind of cool. Like those pants, for example, are new and uh, they offer it available to everyone. You don't have to be in the military to pick it up. You don't need like to show your ID or anything like that. And right now, as of when I'm recording this, they have whoobies in stock. So if you guys are interested in those, which I know a lot of you guys are, uh, they do have those, but authentic military gear and they're always getting new stuff in uh for example the first time i went there they didn't have the saw tools the second time they went there they had them so i snagged them uh process was very easy in terms of ordering they email you every step of the way if you guys like that uh, when it's packed when it's shipped etc when it's delivered 
Uh, so definitely big thank you to Venture Share Plus on that front uh, for sponsoring the video and allowing us to bring this content to you. So back into the optic itself, uh, the body is made out of 7075 T6 aluminum, uh, which is one of the stronger types of aluminums that optics are made out of. And then the mount itself that it comes with is a lower one third mount in terms of height. And uh, it has this little ratcheting system here on this side that actually tightens down. You can kind of feel it clicking, if you will, as it tightens. Um, so it doesn't have like a torque spec like a lot of mounts do, um, but it seems pretty solid. I haven't had any issues with it. It has two large lugs on the bottom that do lock into your Picatinny spec rail. And then basically your controls are uh, over here we have our battery slot. So this battery slot, you unscrew those slots and pull it out, a little tray comes out. It does use a standard 2032 battery, so that is nice. Um, and then additionally, we do have our windage here on the right side. And then if we flip it over to our left side, we also have, excuse me, we have our elevation on the right side, then we have our windage on the left side, if I can speak correctly. Uh, and then we have our buttons on there. So those buttons do a number of different things. As I mentioned earlier, it has the multi-reticle system, so it allows you to toggle between the different reticle systems by pressing and holding. I'm not gonna go through the whole process. It's in the uh, manual if you're interested in it. Um, but it also allows you, of course, to control the brightness of the dot. So uh, there, there, there are a ton of different brightness adjustments. There are four night vision adju adjustments. And this thing gets stupid bright if you want it to, maybe a little <laughs> brighter than you would ever need. I can't see, honestly, at the brightest settings why anyone would ever need that. But it's there if you need it. And one thing I should note that is a huge pro about this optic, in my opinion, is that under night vision, it is one of the clearest uh, that you, you can use. So uh, for example, I have, I believe it's called the five, I believe it's the 515, if not, I believe it's the 515 from Holosun, and it's uh, their little 20 millimeter uh, optic, and that one has, it's one of the older designs as well, and if you're looking through it through night vision, it's very hard to see anything around the dot when you're actually looking through it. This is night and day. This is one of the absolute best um, night vision optics if you want to aim passively through it uh, that we've used. Uh, of course, the other one that comes to mind is going to be the SIG uh, Tango 4, which is really, really good as well. And then, of course, your higher end aim points like your T2 and stuff like that will also have very good uh, light transmission. Probably the king there, as always, is going to be the EOTEX. But the thing about the EOTEX is that it's holographic. It's not uh, LED, so it's really kind of a, a different technology there. Um, but... In terms of night vision, again, do you want to kind of stomp on that as one of the better ones out there if that is something you're into? That said, I'm sure that is a niche market for a lot of people. And uh, other things that we're talking about, like I said, it came out in 2021, beginning of 2021. And at the time, one big con to it, and it still kind of is, is the proprietary mount. So this mount is, uh, I don't want to say proprietary. It used to be proprietary. Now there are a number of different companies, Scalarworks, uh, ADM, Midwest Industries, etc., all make different height mounts for it. So if you want to uh, rise it up to like a 193, something like that, you can do that. If you want a low mount, like we were talking about for a shotgun application, you can do that as well. Um, but I do wish that it came with a standardized mount. It doesn't have to be, you know, aim point if you don't want that micro, but uh, maybe ACOG mini. There's, there's a lot of different kind of like standardized mounts out there. But that said, because Holosun is so popular, like I said, it's kind of become its own animal in terms of the aftermarket support system at this point. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I did pick this one up at the end of 2021, and that is relevant for a few reasons. So when these first came out, uh, there was definitely some cons to them, like the first generation or the first batch, if you will. Uh, number one was going to be that folks that had a lot of blue tint when looking through it. And additionally, people were saying that uh, it had a slight bit of magnification to it, like so like a 1.05 or something like that X. Um, and I can say I picked this one up, like I said, end of 2021, I think December, if I remember correctly. And at that time, they had just release the green versions as well in terms of actually making it out to the market and if you look around the internet one thing you'll find is people saying that the green ones don't have the magnification and don't have um, the the as much tint if that makes sense so this one here is the red version it's not the green dot version but as you guys probably seen from the photos we rolled in um, but this one has like none of that it has absolutely like the cons that people cited in the in the beginning are not present on this optic now of course i only have a sample size of one i've shot a number of them at different industry events and things like that um, actually i believe all of those have been green now that i think about it but this this red one here it has no magnification and it has some of the cleanest glass that i've seen period for any type of red dot now i should mention for folks that are new here um, you have to have some sort of tint to a 
LED optic in order to have good battery life. Now, every year as time goes on, the amount of tank you need uh, to reflect back that LED image goes down. So as technology is going, you know, that amount is, is dimming down. Like if you look at like Gen 1 RMRs, for example, they are very blue. Uh, and like the current SRO, for example, is not. So just it's all companies are getting better and better with that technology. And I think this one here, once the complaints came out, people, the whole of went back to the engineering team, revamped it. And so nowadays, if you're going to purchase one in 2023, I think you're going to get the version I have, which I think was just kind of like a rolling product improvement version uh, because in terms of glass tint if you're somebody who's a snob about that with red dots this one again one of the absolute best i've used to date comparable to like my aimpoint comp m5s which is high praise i know it but it absolutely is true and again has no magnification that i can perceive at all to it so uh, those are some of the cons that i think people have mentioned over the years but Again, the newer ones don't seem to have it. The con I would give it, again, is gonna be the, the mount. Uh, not that it's a bad mount, it's just it's not as universal as I would like. Now, one thing I should mention is that, uh, and I don't think I mentioned it earlier when talking about the mount, is that it does have, they do make adapters rather for the T uh, or the Aimpoint Micro base plate. So you can actually buy an adapter and at that point you have virtually unlimited amounts of mounts. Um, but I do, again, I'm harping on that. I wish it was just a standardized one. Last thing we didn't talk about that we do need to talk about is going to be price point. So pretty much right now, as of when I'm recording this, you can find these for $400 and under, which puts it in a weird, um, weird kind of category for red dot optics. So uh, Holosun, kind of the king of the budget micro red dot, right? Uh, their 403 has been out for years. I have a number of them. You can pretty much always find those under 175, usually under 150, and it's a good red dot. Um, and then kind of at the other end of the spectrum, you have your Aimpoint T2s, your Aimpoint Comp M5s, um, those ones that nowadays with the way the dollar is working, those ones are going for about $900, uh, sometimes $1,000. So uh, for a Chinese-made optic, which I should mention if you didn't know that, Holosun are Chinese-made. Uh, for a Chinese-made optic, it's on the higher end for sure. That said, I would say that it is among the top performers for Chinese-made optics that I have used to date. Uh, and again, they're very proven at this point. Lots of people have them, lots of rounds through them. You really don't hear complaints about them outside of the stuff we mentioned earlier with the original batch. And um, I mean, if you're okay with the Chinese optic and you want the kind of features that this thing has, which it is loaded with features and is a top, uh, top performer in terms of clarity as well as night vision performance, in my opinion, um, then I would go for it. If not, and you're completely anti all that stuff, uh, and you want to pay $900 for an aim point, by all means do so. Both are good. I would just say this is a very good option for the money at this price point. But again, it is a little weird because price point wise, typically people think all of a sudden and at the budget end of it, and that's absolutely not where we are here. So I think that's it. <laughs> Bottom line, would I recommend it? Yes, I absolutely would. If it meets what you're looking for, I would recommend it. And uh, it, we're going to keep using it in the future going forward on the channel. So you will definitely see it if you subscribe, which speaking of that, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, if you have done so and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell. Um, because sometimes my stuff gets censored by a big tech alg algorithm. Uh, additionally, if you guys are looking for deals on this optic, anything else, you can all follow me across my various social media sites that you see here on your screen. Prefer non-Zuckerberg ones, because that's where I can post things most freely. But if you guys are not into that, or if you're into that, and you want to sign up for my daily deals email, you can do that as well. So if this optic, ammo, silencers, lights, guns, etc., if those things go on sale, it will be my daily deals email. It contains eight of the best deals that we find across the internet. If it's in that email on that particular day, it's the cheapest for that specific product that I know of. I've already done the price comparisons for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And it saves you some time and hopefully saves you some money as well. Additionally, if you subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that stuff, and you're still not seeing my stuff, you can sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. It's a totally different email list. This one goes out once a month, and it has all of the videos since the previous month's email went out, so that way it's not super spammy or anything like that, and it j allows you to see my content uh, no matter what is going on in the social media sphere because we're putting it up regardless. So with that, we're going to head over to Mug Club and continue on with the episode. So for everybody on YouTube, it's off.